that's when the can rock music comes in. Are you a yeah. concert t-shirt guy, Mace? I am not, no. Why not? Why don't you have a concert t-shirt? I want to know what concerts you've been to. I don't know. It's just not my thing. I'm more of a sports ball t-shirt guy. <laughs> the world don't move to the... Yeah, the, the world don't move to the beat of just one drum season. Yeah. Different strokes for different folks. That's right. Orange and blue today. Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason, and yeah, the thumbnail says it all. Where are the weapons? <laughs> they need a tight end, Mason. I wanted to complain about this yesterday. We had so much to get to, so mm -hmm. let's get to it today. And we'll bring up the names, and I've got the numbers as well for the contracts. But when this team needs a tight end, they need a weapon tight end. You bring back Adam Troutman, which is fine. But Irv Smith signs for nothing, basically. Mike Jacecki signs for nothing, basically. Jonu Smith signs for pretty much nothing. So you've got these weapon tight ends that you could have been in on, that you could have got for cheap, and the Broncos aren't. Yeah, I'm not saying spend their money, Mace, but where are the weapons mm -hmm. at tight end? Uh, not in Denver right now. I think that that's the answer to your question. Um <laughs> I mean, I guess you can hope that Greg Dulcich can put it together, but he's got to prove he can stay healthy, among other things. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, do you roll the dice on uh, Logan Thomas at some point, perhaps? Washington let it. him go, but... In, in, what we're what we're seeing now, and and maybe this is where we start seeing the Broncos get a little more active here, because you are starting to see the market drop a little bit. I wrote a little bit about this with the quarterback position at DenverSports.com. Mason Rudolph, formerly of the Steelers, now head to the Tennessee Titans. His price tag is up to $3.62 million on a one-year deal. So you think about what we saw. Rudolph, not necessarily comparable to Sam Darnold, although you can say Mason Rudolph has played in one more playoff game than Sam Darnold has. But you're going from $12.5 million a year for Gardner Minshew, $10 million a year for Sam Darnold on, on the one-year deal. You get to like $5 million contract for Drew Locke for one year. Jameis Winston signs after with Cleveland, $4 million. Mason Rudolph, three point six two. So what you see at quarterback is, is going to be reflective of what you see at other positions and that the price tags are dropping. And then the Broncos, I think you'll see maybe uh, go, go through some of these names and uh, find a potential option. But uh, yeah, right now, um, I mean, it may well be looking for somebody who still has some upside. I mean, kind of like uh, you saw with Brandon Jones at uh, safety, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, maybe, but I'm going to bring up the names again. And you and I talked about Jonu briefly when the Dolphins nabbed him, a player that always remind me, reminded me of a Delaney Walker. We probably saw him on the All-Star mm -hmm. Road Trip. Mace, we've seen a lot of players on the All-Star Road Trip. But anyway, mm -hmm. if I bring up those three names, Mike mm -hmm. Jacecki, Irv Smith, Jonu Smith, I'm upset about all three of them not being on the Broncos wish list. Is there any one that you say, oh, that's the one that got away? When Jonu Smith passed through and didn't get signed I, by the Broncos, that was the name that I thought maybe they should consider. Um, but again, as we're seeing right now, price tag-wise, that's not where they're shopping. I mean, so you start looking to see, okay, are there players who could represent some value with upside? I mean, it may be a name like uh, Mitchell Wilcox from the Cincinnati Bengals who's had some brief spurts where he's looked pretty good. He's got some nice pass-catching skills that hasn't ever really materialized on a consistent basis. Is that the sort of name you look at if you're the Broncos to kind of fill in there? Yeah, that's the sort of name. And I'm not talking about Gerald Everett type of deal. Again, him getting his big money. Uh, Noah Fant got paid. We're happy for Noah with that. Um, you know, So I'm not saying they should be in the market for these big price tight ends, but you, we always talk about Emmanuel Sanders being they need to find that kind of bargain wide receiver honestly it's just bargain free agent that has that upside that has that potential i know just like he's been around and irv's been hurt basically mm -hmm. 
but it's like I I for a, a million league minimum, I like taking the chances on those type of guys. Yeah, I mean, I do too. Irv Smith is interesting because when you look at that price tag, that league minimum price tag for a veteran, okay. It also tells you that the prices are coming down. Maybe you start looking at others. I mean, there we are also saying this. Um, you're not talking about one particular player that's going to change the outcome. So now I think you're looking at players where there, you know, three or four that are pretty close to equal. And so it's a matter of maybe getting the one that fits the best. Um, and make sure and make sure that you're covered. Uh, at the position going into the season. I think we can say this. You don't necessarily want to go in relying on Greg Dulcich. So you need somebody who can potentially catch the football. Broncos last year, fewer receptions, fewer yards from the tight end position from any tight end group in the league. You have to get better there. You have to. Yeah. It's not great, Bob. <laughs> it's, not, it's not where you want to be, especially no. with Sean Payton's history of tight end usage. Like, Mm -hmm. He's made some tight ends into some weapons, so much so that Jimmy Graham wanted to be a wide receiver. Remember that? When he tried, his mm -hmm. contract was up, they franchise tag him as a tight end. He's like, I'm not a tight end because he wasn't a tight end. So, like, I, I don't know if, it, if it's envy, Mace. I'm not exactly sure what it is. But you look across the league and you see these playmakers. And Irv Smith going to the Chiefs, mm -hmm. that's, I guess, maybe there's an extra sting there. Because now you've got to see what that guy can do. Travis Kelsey's getting up there, still the greatest of whatever. Uh, but, like, they just got a weapon. And I'm not saying copy everything Kansas City's doing. You can't, and, well, really, you shouldn't. But you let that weapon, potential weapon, go to that team for the league minimum. It's just a little odd to me. A little odd. Um, but... I don't know, man. I mean, it's more than they have, but this is still a guy who's never had more than 365 yards in a season. I mean, it's like the Sam Darnold thing, right? Like, you know, we were sitting here saying it's not a big deal that they didn't get Sam Darnold, right? I mean, I think I'm not sure that uh, the success or failure of this offseason is predicated on getting Irv Smith. The other thing also in Irv Smith is if he's taking a minimum contract from the Chiefs, then how do you know he was going to take any kind of contract from, from the Broncos when maybe he just wanted to go to Kansas City and catch passes from Patrick Mahomes even at a relatively lower salary than he might have gotten otherwise? That may be in play as well. Mm. Well, you mentioned uh, what Wilcox there. I'm just looking over available free agents. I mean, there's not for weapon tight ends. Maybe Ross Dwelly, Ross Dwelly's flash. We like Kenny Yaboa, although I think he already signed, right? He signed back with the Jets. Spot rack might be a little late on some of their signings here. Mm -hmm. um, is Big Bob is Big Bob Tunyon available? I, you know, I just I guess I want a collection of bodies, Mace. Maybe that sounds bad, but mm -hmm. I'm not relying on Greg Dulcich um, at all. We know Troutman, what he can do and what he can't do. We've got some video about Troutman that's that's interesting. You and I talking to him at the end of the mm -hmm. year. But it's like, man, and we know the need is there. And I don't think Brock Bowers is going to be there at 12. I don't no. think their plan is to draft a tight end at 12. But, like, where is that? If it's Jared Wiley, I'll shut up, okay? If it's Jared Wiley in the third round or fourth round, whatever, wherever Jared goes. If it's that kid, I'll be quiet. But right now you need that weapon and it's just not there. Yeah. And maybe this is something where you have to accept. It's going to be a problem that isn't solved this year that, mm. and, and this may be the tale of the 2024 Broncos that this is a building year. It's a step in the process and maybe you're not going to find all the answers right now. You're not going to be able to solve all of the problems today or even next month in the draft or beyond. Like that may be just part of what we're dealing with here that you're not, that you're going to have to live with some position groups that aren't as productive or don't have all the skills that you'd want. I mean, it's frustrating because we just watched the year when again, in which the Broncos tight ends were among were the least productive from a pass catching perspective. The other thing is this, and even though it didn't quite pan out, are any of these tight ends 
um, better as a prospect than Lucas Kroll going into year three in the scheme. Because remember, he was in New Orleans the previous year, right? Mm -hmm. That may be, and again, I always say hope is not a strategy, but maybe what they're thinking is, is their best chance to keep pushing Lucas Kroll out there because he was very close, a great defensive play away from having the kind of career changing explosive play that often can alter a player's trajectory back in week 18 against the Raiders. So close to that long touchdown pass reception on the post route from Jarrett Stidham. Right. I know you say hope isn't a strategy, Mace, but I will say this. I'm more hopeful about Lucas Kroll than I am Greg Dulcich. And it's just injuries with mm. Greg. We know that the, the physical talent, this is what I try to impart on Twitter sometimes, and I don't succeed because Twitter's the realm of the lowest common denominator. As um, you like to say. <laughs> yes. Sandy. Sandy would always say that. So mm -hmm. I will quote the great Sandy Clef there. Um, for me, it's like the, the physical stuff so easy to see. Yes, mm -hmm. Greg Dulcich is talented, everybody. He can't stay healthy. I want to see more Lucas Kroll because you bring up a good point. You know, is mm -hmm. he better than Irv Smith? Yeah, I, I would take a, a chance more on him. I there guess you I go. Just, again, want more bodies. I want mm -hmm. more weapons. And then, well, we got to figure out this quarterback thing, Mace, because you and I have been <laughs> we've been sitting on the edge of our seat waiting for something, something. Yeah, my iPad is never far from me. Went out for lunch today, <laughs> slung my on. iPad in, in my bag. Right. Like, okay, I might have to punch something up here, right? You're always on the lookout. But um, the interesting thing that happens is when you get past that initial flurry on day one, right? You get past that, and then it slows down a bit. And we're kind of in the slowdown moment, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the first wave, the legal tampering period, which is the oxymoron of oxymorons. So there's that, this frenzy, feeding frenzy, and then it's like, okay, now exhale. Mm -hmm. Then there's another like little mini feeding frenzy, and maybe we're in that now. Yeah, and then it settles down as you get into the next week. And then it, then the faucet turns off right around the league meeting. So like, if it's status quo quarterback before the Broncos – uh send their top brass down to Orlando for the league meetings in a week in a little over a week and a half, uh, then it might be status quo until right, right around the draft. Oof. You remember, well, look, you remember three years ago, they sat and sat and sat and then they traded for Teddy Bridgewater. I believe it was the day before the draft. Yes, I believe so. Right. Mm -hmm. And even though it's a Sean Pay show, it might be a George Payton thing to say, let's just be patient here. Listen to Sean. Uh, the Marcus Mariota thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You I want, I want it to now. be that guy. You want it now. Cecil, they don't have to play a game this Sunday. They're not even going to have a practice with a ball until, what, like May 20th or something like that? What is Washington, yeah. if we're going to focus on Sam Howell, which I think we should, what is Washington waiting for? They got Marcus Mariota. You're not going to get anything for Sam Howell. Are they waiting for him to be released? I mean, no. can't you just throw him a sixth and call it good? Uh, and and that's just one of the two quarterbacks that are needed. So part of my impatience in my strategy opposite of George Payton, I'll be nice today, Mace, maybe. But it's like, you need two quarterbacks. We're effing around talking about just, wait, when's their first one? It's like, well, you need two. They haven't even got the first one sitting there on Jared Stidham on March 13th. Okay. Regarding Sam Howell specifically, put yourself in the shoes of Adam Peters, the new Washington general manager. Very and good um, man. very good man. Yes. And why wouldn't he sit there and wait until the draft? Because he may be waiting to see, okay, which teams that want a quarterback don't get a quarterback. And then I can go send them Sam Howell or offer them Sam Howell. The longer this goes, what does it mean for you? Because the, then the fan base is rabid. 
you know, again, part of my impatience is so to satiate the fans out there. Mm -hmm. But what does it mean to you the longer this quarterback thing goes? Like, to, and I still believe it's 95% they go quarterback in the first round. I believe it's probably 75% they move up. Everyone's asking mm -hmm. about percentages. Is Are your percentages changing? Mine can't really change because I'm not going to say 100%, but like, is it changing based on the strategy we're seeing unfold in front of us? Not yet, because I'm used to thinking they might take a quarterback in the first round and seeing that they don't. Talking about, hey, talked about it in 2018, didn't do it. Talked about it maybe in 2019, they waited until the second round, Drew Locke. Talked a little bit about it in 20, but more in the theory of, okay, do you really want to avoid making a move up for a quarterback that you are known to have liked, Justin Herbert, just because you have Drew Locke coming back? Well, they chose to ride Drew Locke instead of trying to move up and get Justin Herbert, and they're still paying the price for that. 2021, thinking about draft quarterback. Okay, well, in the end, Trey for Teddy, Bridgewater right before the draft, and then you take Pat Tan. I'm so used to this team not taking a quarterback at moments where it would be logical to do so, that I think that is affecting why, why I'm not moving up my odds from whatever I said was 57%. Some, yeah, you got, to, it was yeah some, I got you to 57. It was something stupidly precise like that, not a multiple of five <laughs> or 10. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Like, I, I feel like, if you get your hopes up that they're going to get somehow get a quarterback that you might be disappointed. And what was it that, uh, in the movie dodgeball, like about having a goal, the uh, Vince Vaughn's character said, like, if you have a goal, you might not reach it, but if you don't, you're never disappointed. I got to tell you, it feels phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> average Joe's. Well, it's yes. in Hollywood, baby. So like there, there'll be mm -hmm. the average Joe's and, uh, the purple Cobra. What was it? What was their name? The Globo Jim Purple Globo Cobras. Jim, purple Cobras, come kick your ass. So, is that who the mm. Chiefs are with Mahomes and that? Look at the hair. Like, is that are the Chiefs the Globo look at Jim? This, look at this hair. Hey, but speaking <laughs> of hair, speaking of hair, I got to ask you a question here. What was did that? You, did you wash your hair today? Um, I put it in a ponytail today. Okay, yeah. so you didn't yeah. wash your hair? No, not today. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's gross to some people, but with long hair, you actually shouldn't wash your hair every day. You shouldn't. Yeah, not everyone washes the their hair every day. I, I do wash my hair every day. I'm just saying, not everyone does. Yeah, that, when I had that, short hair, I would, because it's it's cool, style it. But with long hair, you, long hair, it's uh, <laughs> it takes some time. It may, <laughs> it may not look like. Sometimes that's why it looks like the way it does. It's like, oh, okay, you just, you just rolled out of bed. Am I doing the wrong thing by washing my hair every day? Then, um, you could probably go every other day. Honestly, let the natural oils and stuff. I don't want to get okay. too crunchy and start talking about burning incense or whatever, but like, uh, it, yeah, it just, let, those, let those oils take over. Okay. I, all right. So I just have to say this. It just doesn't always, it's weird. It doesn't feel clean when I don't wash my hair. And I, 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 that's why I wash my hair every day. And I guess now I am learning that I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> It's good to learn, Mace. It's good to learn. You're What's... never too old to learn. Very true. Very true. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, for sure about that. Um, from hair tips back to Adam Troutman, what's there to see more with Adam? We've got this clip from him, you know, and talking about how he's made some improvements. It's just one of those things, Mace, where it's like we were excited, perhaps me more than you. We can debate that about Troutman when he came here. I even asked him in training camp. I was like, you scored 14 touch touchdowns your final season at Dayton. Not the whole career. His season, his last season, mm -hmm. he was a touchdown hog. And he, what's he got, like 11 touchdowns in his career? Whatever the number is. Like, he hasn't matched that total. I understand it's Dayton. But I even asked Adam in training camp, like, hey, you're going to ask Sean, like, hey, get that red zone thing going. And he just kind of laughed. And I'm like, yeah, but that, it's never developed. He was a sleeper. Uh, coming out of Dayton, you and I saw him at the Senior Bowl. Mm -hmm. He competed well. We're excited. He comes to the Broncos. We're excited. And now I'm – it's just – that's who he is. You know, my grandmother would say that's just his way. Like, Adam Troutman's going to be what we know Adam Troutman is. Dennis Green, he is who we thought he was. He did have a career high in touchdown catches last year. And the career high was? Three. Okay. I was going to say four. So I mean – is there it's more? Good. Is there more on the bone? 
Adam Troutman believes there is, in part because he believes he's becoming a smarter player with, in time. And let's roll that beautiful meme footage. I think as a leader, um, obviously we have Chris in there, and he's a leader as well. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's one of the biggest uh, areas I've improved in. Um, and then, like, I think every year you get a little smarter, and you make things a lot easier. Like, when you can trim down that time from, all right, you hear the play in the huddle, you get to the line, you see the defensive personnel, you see who you're going against, you see, like, where you need to, like, everything speeds up. And when you have about three to four seconds before a snap and you already know what you're doing, that's when, like, things start to click. People talk about all the time, like, oh, the game slows down because I'm, I'm just playing more. That doesn't happen unless you figure out little tricks and things to speed it up in your mind. It doesn't just happen from just playing. So, um I'd say that part I've improved in as well. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think it's been good. There you go. Adam Troutman, more to more to gain, being a faster mm -hmm. learner, learning, thinking faster, reacting on the football field. Yeah, and that's where you're hoping progress is going to come. Now, that being said, I don't think we're going to be looking up at Adam Troutman this year and suddenly talking about him being a, you know, a, 50 catch guy, right? I think it's a matter of him being about a 30 to 35 catch guy. That's what you're hoping. I, honestly, like reception wise, we're 30 catches back over 10 yards of reception. So maybe 30 for 340 and uh, four or five touchdowns. I think that's what you're hoping for. But yeah. that's not going to be enough to get what you want out of the position. Right. And a young quarterback's best friend is a running game and a tight end. And it's like, okay, well, maybe that, maybe he gets 40 catches this year because a young passer is going to look for the relief valve, right? The uh, security blanket, if you will. So maybe mm -hmm. that bumps his number up to 40. And maybe he does improve. But Mace, I'll tell you this when I think of Brandon Johnson, Jalen Virgil, right? I get excited about these young receivers that we haven't mm -hmm. seen much yet from. When I look at Lucas Kroll, I'm somewhat excited, but I'm I, again. You're tempering it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's not enough. More excitement. More you're, some sizzle. You're hoping that whoever the quarterback is can get the ball to him better. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, like the uh, the play at the end of the Houston game when Russell Wilson eventually looked toward Lucas Kroll. Mm -hmm. um, there were people who tried to put that on Lucas Kroll. No, no. <laughs> hey, that guy that never played, he didn't make a play. Like, uh, come on. Even people I respected try to put that on Kroll and not on Russell Wilson. Yeah, <clears throat> there's mm -mm. some of that going around, Mace. So I'll I'll say privately or publicly, I guess. Like, it's just been down so long. We have smart football people that are taking these wild lashes at the Broncos and it's like man yeah it's been down but Sean Payton's here to make it right I just wish they'd make it right faster <laughs> okay I get everyone's impatient it's been seven straight losing seasons mm -hmm. um yeah uh, inside that building they're not operating on the same timeline as the fan bases <laughs> <laughs> right but there is a timeline mm -hmm. there is a timeline we're here to let everybody know there is a timeline it's just realistically speaking if this team is pushing for a wild card berth in the back half of the 2025 season that means the plan is working mm -hmm. and you said 2025 not 2024 there's an on-ramp here you mm -hmm. know that you see the interstate the broncos are on the on-ramp and I won't insult a car maker, but they're, you know, they're in the beat up car. The old hoop. Mm. It doesn't it's, have much horsepower. It's the, uh, you ever see, um, the world's end. Yes. Okay. The, it's the beast. The 1989 <laughs> Gr Granada Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that. That, yeah. that he had to basically put a new engine in new shocks, new brakes, new, new everything to make it functional, but it's still right. the same. But on the surface, it's still the same old beast. <clears throat> well, I'll as, say this. As I'll as say trying to continue to cling to 19, everything 1990. I'll use a movie that we quote a lot. It's the AMC Pacer X 
from Garth in Wayne's World. Yes. That's what they're in right now. So let's just sing Bohemian Rhapsody. Let's hope that there's a little turbo button for Sean Payton. Mm -hmm. So Sean Payton would be, is he Wayne then? He's got to be the leader, right? Is Sean he's, Payton the Wayne? He's Wayne. Who's Garth? Is, is Garth the George Payton? <laughs> or no, it's, uh, um, yeah. Because uh, he's got a prominent role. Here's the question. Who's the guy in the back of the car who's about to throw up? <laughs> is that, uh, you know what? That's the fan base. That's the Broncos fans right there. They're the guy in the car that was like, boop, boop, let me go. Well, not let you. Let me go. If you're going to spew, spew, spew into, into this. this. Phil, that's his name. Phil, right? Hey, Phil, <laughs> if you're going to spew, spew into this. He, un right, he unfolds the Dixie cup, right? Like it's not mm -hmm. like unfolds. Hey, spew into this. Mm -hmm. I've taught my daughter that. <laughs> Okay. If you're gonna nice. spew, spew into this. Spew into this. <laughs> gotta have it just in case. You gotta have it. That's what I feel like. We're on a road trip. You said you like road trips, Mace. Yeah, I do. We're on a road trip with the Broncos. So buckle uh, up. We got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. That's yeah. And maybe the thing that it. and maybe in, in honor of Bohemian Rhapsody, maybe what we're thinking about this season. If we're saying okay, the focus is on getting it right and being a long-term contender, and maybe, and maybe this season is about building. This season is nothing really matters to me. Yeah, but it'll be beautiful harmony when it works. Let's just get fast forward to the headbanging part <clears throat> or the Scooby Doo ending. I'm not sure. Tom wants to know: Is Jimmy G an option for us? God, I hope not. Um, if he's an option, he's not going to play weeks one or two. Yeah, that's right. Could he be an option? Absolutely. Um, but does that suspension take him out of the running? Because if you have a young quarterback and again, there's varying mm -hmm. belief on who it is and when they're going to get him. Okay. I, I want somebody starting for about a month. If the kid's not ready, start somebody for about a month. Well, Jimmy G can't start the first two games. So does that automatically take him off your list? His play takes him off his li the list for me, Mace. But from the Broncos' perspective, does his suspension make you go like, yeah, we you kind of need somebody early in case that young player isn't ready, whoever that player is? Yeah, I mean, the other thing that maybe you could do if it's Jimmy G is you give Jarrett Stidham the first couple weeks, see where he is, and if Stidham's playing well, you leave him out there, and if not, you turn to Jimmy G in week three. And Jimmy G could run the rhythm and timing aspects of the Sean Payton offense. But the thing also on Garoppolo is this. He doesn't really stay healthy. You have to count on an injury at some point. That's just been part and parcel of his career. Most of the seasons that mm -hmm. he's missed multiple games due to injuries. And it's accelerated as he's gotten older. So I, Garoppolo is definitely a possibility. But I would say this, I hope the Broncos would not look at Garoppolo and say, okay, well, we don't have to take a quarterback early. No, 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 you do. You do. Jimmy G is a Band-Aid, nothing more. What do you say as we wrap up today's show to the people that say, you don't need another quarterback. You, you already have a bridge. It's Stidham. Mm -hmm. You already paid Stidham. I've heard it. I have an answer, Mace. It's not nice, so I might not say it. But what's your answer? And then help me out because I'll answer people on Twitter. They already have a bridge. Eh, not if your bridge isn't good. How long do you really expect the Jarrett Stidham bridge to hold up before fans start clamoring for the replacement, right? Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. We what saw you for two weeks, it wasn't good. What you want is a strong enough bridge to where – you don't feel like you have to rush the young quarterback out there. That's the key thing here. Mm -hmm. um, and that, to me, requires having another person in there. How about you? That's why, to quote Tommy Boy, you got the pretty new pet. Whoever that young quarterback is, you must maintain his timeline of success and progression. Don't rush him out there. Don't be... <clears throat> maybe not stubborn, impatient. Maybe that's the word of the day. Whoever mm -hmm. that young quarterback is, Mace, like, you got a pretty new pet. I love my pet. I love him. 
Like, you but gotta... you don't want to crumble. Ah! <laughs> I, I killed my the pet. sail. <laughs> That's when I blow it. You don't want to do that. You you don't want to rush the quarterback out there before they're ready. Now, again, if they are ready early, shoot, start the timeline. If you draft Drake May, trade up and draft Drake May, and he's ready by week one, do it. Right? Go. Okay, go. Just like C.J. Stroud, do it. But you want to have the flexibility and the option of not having to do that. And I would say, let's say Jimmy Garoppolo is $4 million in the end based on where prices are going. Is that flexibility worth $4 million? I'd say probably yes. Yeah. In, in my humble opinion. Have some options, right? But I'd rather have Sam Howell. I'd rather have him as well. But we'll see. We'll see. They're waiting, man. It, by the way, wait? real quick. All right. Hmm. Did you ask me on the concert t-shirt? Because that is specifically a concert t-shirt. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm just wondering, like, I've never seen you wear a concert t-shirt. So I was just curious. Yeah. I, I don't have any in my wardrobe. What's the last I, concert you went to? The last concert I went to, um, I went to see, uh, see Beck and Phoenix uh, last summer at Red Rocks. Whoa. Mm. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. All right. All right. See, you got the, got the cool factor there with who you go. I to. don't know about me. Cool. I am not cool. No. <laughs> You're cool to me. I don't know what that says, but it says a lot. I'm a, I'm a loser, baby. So why don't you kill me? <laughs> and then what's the French thing he says? Okay. I, I don't know what the, uh, I would yeah. always just mumble. Well, so head to toe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I almost got you. Uh, almost got you. Oh my gosh. I think we're getting slap happy because we're over 30 minutes now. And it's just like it's not think... French, it's Spanish, by the way. Oh, it's Spanish? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think we're just from waiting around, like, come on, do something. Do something. You got a little money? Do yeah. something. It's like on the Simpsons. You ever see you've seen the meme? When are they going to get to the fireworks factory? When you know when all when everyone's sitting around watching the Itchy and Scratchy episode, and they're introducing a new character, a rapping dog named Poochie, and <laughs> it's all hyped up, right? And Millhouse like, when are we going to get to the fireworks factory? <laughs> he starts crying. Yeah, of course. Sure. The thing is, when they they don't ever get to the fireworks factory because instead they introduce this Poochie. Uh, the character goes over like a stale fart and they end up writing him out by saying he died on the way back to his home planet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. There we go, everybody. Um, we appreciate you all. Again, the response has been amazing. Helping us out on YouTube, helping to grow the channel, uh, giving us, you know, the support and love and energy. <clears throat> we all need it, Mace. We all need it. <laughs> you know, as we go through our daily lives, I had a a friend texts me today mm -hmm. as I go through my stressors of life. And my friend said, light and sweet, baby. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, man. We're just yeah. here to talk some ball, man. We want the Broncos to be great. And hopefully they can get there sometime. It's more fun when they're good. I was actually We've had saying, fun. I said today at lunch, I mean, that those games in December when I was driving to the stadium in Houston or driving to the stadium in Detroit when the playoffs are on the line and you're thinking, Oh, if they can win this, they can be back in the postseason. The games that meant something going in. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. The, you know, the anticipation was fun. The actual result wasn't as fun. The locker rooms after the game certainly were fun, but the anticipation was right. So, that's why I always say my favorite moment of the NFL season is like the 15 minutes before all the early games start on that first Sunday. Because at that moment, everybody, it's all about potential and possibility. It's so optimistic. And then mm -hmm. reality comes and blasts you like a Mike, like Mike, the late Mike Curtis hitting a fan traipsing onto the field, you know, just <laughs> shoulder shiver in the middle. Yeah. Then the regular season shows up. Reality beats you up like a fat man in Ultimon. 
Uh, by the way, did you know one of the cameramen at the Altamont concert was George Lucas? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All sorts of useless trivia up here. Buddy. Well, there's a, and of course, there's a Broncos tie-in because George Lucas is, of course, the spouse of Broncos co-owner Melody Hobson. Mm-hmm. See, we tied it all back together. All back to the Broncos. Here we go. All right. <laughs> uh, is there a lag? Is that why our outro has been off? People like it. We've been told now that it's funnier that we're not timed up like we were at the Combine. We were so tight. There's so always perfect. there's always a lag when you do it over a streaming like this. Always a slight lag. Okay. Yeah. All unfortunately. Right. It's well, like what? On... It's like what? Okay. Maybe it is. If there's a lag, maybe you need to, maybe I need to like, when you start, I need to kind of, I need to kind of, be maybe like uh anticipating a bit maybe i need to be a bit behind you uh in real time and then we can figure this out okay or what we could do is like a three-man weave in basketball with mm-hmm. two men and just pass it off so i say one let's thing, do that say the next okay all okay, right let's all go right. help us out on youtube bye like comment share subscribe hit that notification bell so that you never, never miss, miss- uh vid vid <laughs> i don't know if that's gonna come out better or worse <laughs> you guys if you're can watching, let us know pl- if you're watching please let us know <laughs> yeah let us know in the comment section you got some overtime today i'm sorry we're waiting broncos do something we're here for you he's andrew mason you follow him on all the socials at mace denver i'm at Cecil salami saying obt is a bfd thanks for watching stay tuned and would you please Stay frosty.